Talk about a split screen reality. Neil Gorsuch, the Supreme Court nominee, giving his opening statement to the Senate committee, and I'm watching it on Fox, and I look at CNN and MSNBC, and they're still with the James Comey hearing. Both big stories, I get it, but I didn't think I would ever see a day when the beginning of the hearing of a Supreme Court nominee would be overshadowed here in Washington. A reflection, I think, of just how intense the fixation and obsession is with matters involving the FBI and President Trump. Now, there's no question James Comey made news when he did what just about everybody expected him to do and testify before the House Intelligence Committee that he had no evidence that Trump had been wiretapped or surveilled, uh, not only at the uh, request of President Obama, but at all. And the White House seemed to accept that after more than two weeks of intense uh, jockeying over this unproven claim by the president, Sean Spicer, who didn't push back on the briefing. But the other thing that got big headlines at the uh, Comey testimony was his saying, confirming something that everybody in Washington and around the world already knew, that there is an ongoing FBI investigation of possible collusion between Trump associates and Russia during the campaign. Now, of course, the press went crazy on that, but what Comey didn't say was that there was any evidence of any improper contacts or improper collusion. Now, of course, it, you could say, well, it's an ongoing investigation. He's the head of the FBI. He can't divulge that. And it was true that Comey was in an uncomfortable position all day. He didn't want to say very much about any of this. And there was a lot of partisan posturing on both sides. Democrats uh, reading a lot of things into the record, uh, different news stories about Michael Flynn or other Trump associates, whatever context they may have had with Russians. Knowing full well, uh, Comey made clear he's not going to comment on it, but just to get it on the record, play to the television audience. Republicans, meanwhile, stressing the illegal leaks. And that's a fair point of Flynn's name and others. Uh, this is all supposed to be classified confidential stuff, and yet somehow it made its way into the newspapers. So um, my only thought is this, and Sean Spicer made this argument to, the, to me in a Media Buzz interview. He was saying that there's a false media narrative because the press doesn't emphasize, and indeed, in his view, barely covers um, the lack of any evidence so far uh, showing any improper collusion between the Trump folks and Moscow. Uh, at the same time, Spicer and the White House didn't very much want to talk about the other side of this, which is that there was no evidence and there remains no evidence to this day of the president's tweet storm about having been wiretapped by that bad or sick guy, Barack Obama. He kept saying, let's wait for the House and Senate Intelligence Committees. Well, we are now seeing that they don't have anything at least so far. So as this goes forward, and this story now I think could drag on for weeks or months, you know, let's apply the same standard. Let's be fair. If there's no evidence of something, let's not just use the fact that there's an investigation to presume that something improper took place. At the end of this, we may find out that there was something improper, but more, uh, it's just as likely that we'll find out that, the, you know, talking to the Russian ambassador during a campaign, which in and of itself, if you're straightforward about it, is not necessarily something nefarious, may not lead to anything. And at that point, I think we'll hear a lot from the president on his Twitter about the way the media have covered it.